don't think it can happen to you. The hit and run chase in California, a motorcycle rider witnessing a driver slam into several cars and then speeding away. It can happen to you within seconds. A blink of an eye. Tonight about the man suspected of killing a woman in a hit and run and his plan to evade justice. When you take your eyes off the road for just seconds, when you're driving your car, oh, yes, it can happen to you. See, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When the sands of time will run out within your hourglass. New at 10, a hit and run caught on video, and now a teenager and his family are looking for the driver who took off. He was a victim of a distracted driver hitting the road while riding his motorcycle going 65 miles per hour. He nearly lost his life. Now on a crusade to help save lives and prevent someone else from becoming a victim, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com and now the host of this podcast, it's Howard Drescher. Good morning to you, wherever you're listening to this show from, whether it be in the East Coast, West Coast, or way overseas, in the several different countries that this podcast show is now expanding to. Uh, we're expanding to several different countries, and we're expanding in several different states. It's starting to be the hottest podcast show that's going on right now. But before we get into that, I just want to indicate to you or convey my deepest sympathies for the actor Leslie Jordan, who died yesterday at the age of 67, I believe. Uh, my sources are telling me that he was involved in a car crash, hit a tree, I think in Hollywood area. I don't have all the facts. I just know that I understand that he had passed away due to a vehicle crash. They're not sure if he lost control of the vehicle due to some medical condition or anything like that. But I remember watching him on several different shows. A very good, very good actor. Um, and if you remember during the pandemic, hey, this guy was putting up. TikTok or YouTube videos uh, and started to reinvent himself in that aspect. But I do remember watching him on, I think, Will and Grace. I think that was really when I first heard or saw his performance on television. Uh, from here, from DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show, and all our staff, again, our sympathies go out to his family. And may he rest in peace. Leslie Jordan, 67, passed away due to a vehicle crash yesterday. Anyways, uh, with that said, several different things going on. And of course, I'm Howard Drescher, your host of DistractedDriversBusted.com. And of course, now this podcast show, you can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV. You can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. Just type in the keyword, Distracted DB. Okay, so here it is. Here it is. Now our weather is changing here in Southern California, and as well as probably pretty much everywhere in the States. It's starting to get cooler. It's starting to get darker a little bit earlier. It's starting to get dark around 4.30 Five o'clock. Oh, I don't like that. I never did, and I never will. But it's true. I uh, I never did like that. But today, we're talking about something that has been involved in Detroit, and something that I don't like that's happening over there, especially to a victim. A victim of a drunk driver, who now faces hard times, could possibly be evicted from her home. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. But I got to tell you, I have advocated for uh, driver education to be in school 
back in school. I know out here in California, I mean, right here in Temecula Valley High School, they don't have driver education anymore. And I remember when I got into doing these podcasts, I contacted them to find out how their driver education program was going. And I was told by the principal, we don't have that. It costs too much. That costs too much. But yet, you have students out there driving. And I'm sure that these pop-up driver education schools are good. But there is nothing like being in a high school when you know your friends are with you, your peers are with you, and you make a mistake while you're in driver education. The embarrassment, the shame of it, you don't want to do that. I felt it when I was in school. I didn't like it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You need that group mentality so you kind of check and balance each other. It's important. It's very important that, that you do this because it is like socially acceptable to kind of nag at your, your peers because you don't want to embarrass yourself like I embarrassed myself one time and we'll get into that at another time but the importance is now you got 22 year old kids out there that really 18 19 year olds 20 21 22 year olds that are just thinking that they own the road that they think they're invincible they can live forever and we'll get into a story about that coming up in just a little bit and of course there is nothing worse than somebody who was involved in a crash. Somebody who was involved in a crash who solicited somebody to help hide evidence. That person luckily said no. And all of that was used against a Florida drunk driver as they tried to hide evidence in a fatal crash. And eventually... Well, we'll tell you a little bit about what eventually happened. All right, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. Again, I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and, of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. And I appreciate everyone who listens to me and follows me and uh, supports me and my podcast show. I appreciate each and every one of you. Again, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. When we come back, AAA in Detroit, you got to step up. You have to step up. You're going to listen to a story, and it's going to blow your mind. You're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, podcast show. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit stoptextstoprex.org. 
A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to the DistractedDriversBuster.com podcast show. Again, I'm your host, Howard Dresser, the creator of DistractedDriversBuster.com. And of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV. And of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. You can listen to not only this show, but all my archive shows at Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and Amazon. Just type in the keyword, DistractedDB. Okay, so in Detroit, and this story comes from uh, Fox 2 News, and they're in Detroit, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. I appreciate everyone who allows me to use their sound. And uh, in Detroit, there was a victim of a drunk driver who's now facing hard times after a catastrophic claims fund was slashed in half. I think they were being paid a certain amount by either the state, federal government, whatever. I'm not really sure on that behalf. But whatever it was, it's now a hardship because you have a person who's taking care of this young lady who was involved in a uh, bad crash by a drunk driver. And you got the caretaker who's working with them. You got mortgages to pay. You got hospital bills that keep coming in. All this stuff keeps piling and adding up over and over and over again. Solution? You have this catastrophic funds. And they've been paid for so long. Now, the twist in this is, apparently it was not supposed to be retroactive. So, whoever was getting a certain amount of money at the time remains to get that time. Although, AAA says they are following the law. And it was the perpetrator's insurance company who caused the crash. So, they say they're following the law, but the victim and the assistant who is helping her says, oh no, that is not so. And again, this story comes from Fox 2 News in Detroit. Every day is a struggle. Every day has been a struggle for the past 20 years for Sanford Miles and his wife Phyllis, who suffered brain damage when she was run over by a drunk driver back in 2002. Her cousin was killed. We met them in 2005. Their case still had not been to court. They were still seeking justice. We were innocent people. The problem solvers helped to get a conviction on their case that had fallen through the cracks. Since then, Sanford has been Phyllis's full-time caregiver, and the Miles family has received benefits through the catastrophic claims fund. That is until Michigan's new no-fault law took effect, and their payments from Mimic Insurance went from $12,000 a month to $4,000. The bills continue. I mean, we have people that, oh, I'm so sorry, I hear you, I understand it's wrong, but when are you going to pay that bill? Yeah, and they want to know, and I have no answers for them. But relief for many a month ago when the Court of Appeals ruled the new law did not apply retroactively. Only problem, the insurance companies like Mimic, owned by AAA, are not complying with the ruling. Ran over by a driver that was drunk. This was their client. You see what they're doing to us? You know they're not doing right? I don't like it. I'm tired of it. The Miles family now facing eviction. They've already been to court and have another date next month, trying to stay in their home. Meantime, the insurance industry refuses to comply with the Court of Appeals ruling and is appealing to the state Supreme Court, all while real people suffer. From a humanistic point of view, they should be paying these people. These people are suffering. AAA Michigan telling Fox 2, we have provided timely payments on this claim since 2002 and will continue to provide personal injury protection benefits in accordance with the law. But attorneys for victims of catastrophic injuries say that's just not true. The industry is not acting in accordance with the law. The decision of the Court of Appeals is the law in the state of Michigan. They have the right to file their claim of appeal. Um, but but in the interim, this is the law, and they should be following it. In Farmington Hills, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News. All right, and that story comes from 
Fox 2 News out there in Detroit, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. Yeah, triple A in Detroit. Get it together. If you're following the law, and of course, the Court of Appeals repealed the uh, retroactiveness, so therefore, they still should be getting paid what is justly due. Uh, your thoughts on that, you can contact me at uh, hdresher3, I'm sorry, you can contact me on uh, DistractedDB, IM me, DM me, uh, you can also go to at DistractedDBTV and uh, contact me there. Is this something that uh, AAA should step up and get, get it right? Hmm, I think so. Again, you're listening to DistractedDriversBuster.com, the podcast show. Uh, when we return, oh yes, when we return, 22 years old, mm, his life is pretty much over, we'll find out why, you're listening to DistractedDriversBuster.com, the podcast show, we'll be back right after this. You're listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Honey, are you ready to go to the party? We're late. Uh, what? Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll be ready in five minutes, babe. Really? Can you get off the phone? I'm already ready. We're going to be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I'm almost done. Uh, we'll, we'll... Let's go. Come on. Oh, okay, honey. Let's go. Can you be ready next time? I feel like I'm always ragging on you to get ready for these types of parties. Yeah. Isn't the man supposed to be waiting on the lady yeah, anyway? I'm, I'm sorry, babe. I, I know I say this all the time, but I, I promise. Next time, I really, 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 really promise next time I'll be ready, and I'll be ready to go by the time you get home. Gosh. Uh, oh, uh, let me see who that is. I'm waiting to see if my friend is actually going to be at this no. party. No. Leave your phone alone. You know that scared me last time. You nearly hit someone walking in a crosswalk. What? No, you're crazy. Look, what? I told you don't tell me what to do. I got this. Stop the car. Stop it now. I... I just can't be with someone who doesn't care about my life, not to mention their own. But babe, wait, wait, come back. Uh, this, this isn't happening, is it? Wake up and text. Text and eat. Text and catch the bus. Text and miss your stop. Wait, 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 wait. Text and be late to work. Sorry, I'm late. Text and work. Text and pretend to work. Text and act surprised when someone calls you out for not working. Who, me? Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to the DistractedDriversBuster.com, the podcast show. I'm your host, Howard Drescher, the creator of DistractedDriversBuster.com, and of course, now this podcast show. You can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and of course, on Facebook, it's DistractedDB. Get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and Amazon. Just type in the keyword distracted db. Okay, so here we are. We're going to just jump right into it. This story comes from ABC 13 in Houston. And a 22 year old who probably had no driver education in his entire life, who at the age of 20, 21, 22, they think they can live forever. There's nothing that can damage their body. They can. They act like, okay, I can do whatever, I'll heal quickly, and I move on, and next thing you know, there's all sorts of chaos. Well, he's accused of drunk driving in a crash that ended up killing a two-year-old child. Again, this story comes from ABC 
13 in Houston. Well, happening right now, we're waiting for the first court appearance for a 22-year-old who is charged with driving drunk and killing a two-year-old boy. ABC 13 reporter Jeff Ealing is live at the jail complex in downtown Houston with the latest on this just awful tragedy. Jeff? And good morning to you, Melody. And police say that this was one of two fatal DUI accidents involving children over the weekend. And as you mentioned, in this particular case, the child that died was just two years old. Rene Alfredo Alvarado Lopez charged with intoxication, manslaughter, and failure to stop and render aid. Now, according to police, Alvarado Lopez was driving a green Dodge Ram pickup truck through the parking lot of an apartment complex on Naren when he allegedly struck a two-year-old child walking in the driveway area. Police say that Alvarado Lopez then drove off. Witnesses told police that they pursued him and caught up to his vehicle just outside the front of the apartment complex. And police say that those witnesses were able to detain him and they kept him on the scene until officers got there. Now, paramedics also got to the scene and unfortunately they pronounced the child deceased at the scene. Officers, meanwhile, questioned Alvarado Lopez and authorities say they determined that he was intoxicated and took him into custody. He was charged with two felonies in this crash. He was scheduled to appear at the 10 a.m. docket, but that is only just now beginning, Melanie. So typically on the probable cause hearings, we do get to hear a little more evidence about what the police say happened in these cases. So as soon as that happens, we will, of course, update you. Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. Boy, your heart just breaks for the family of that two-year-old. Thank you. Oh, yes, that heart does break for the family. And uh, quite honestly, to tell you the truth, I want to thank ABC 13 in Houston for the audio on that disturbing but there is good news there is people that are out there helping uh victims they're tracking the perpetrator down i don't want to say they're vigilantes no but they did retain him and the authorities got him in handcuffs and thanks to those um you know bystanders who decided to step in and help you have to make a stand if not this is not going to work People are just going to be dying. It's like and going to end up like the wild, wild west. But I think in all honesty, to tell you the truth, yes, yes, you have to go to school. And you have to have driver education in school. And by the way, real quickly, when you think about this, politicians are politicking left and right. And I'm getting these text messages. Hey, I want to run for a school council. I want to run for this. I want to run for this. My first question is, what are you going to do to reinstate driver education in school? I got all these politicians that want to do something. And then I, I, I text them back. What are you going to do about distracted driving? What are you going to do about this that is killing people left and right? I hear nothing. It's like crickets. I hear nothing. So obviously, they know that I text back to them. I hate this time of year because the politicians are only looking out for their own agenda. But when you oppose something back to them, when you propose something back to them, I should say, they don't want to hear it. That's not in their agenda. So that kind of tells me they're only thinking about themselves. So it's up to you to decide on who you want to vote into office. I can't tell you what to do on that. But... It's going to be interesting in the next couple of weeks. And maybe this guy might get back to me. I doubt it because it's been two days. I mean, I received his text right away. Talked to him. Sent it back. No problem. What's the issue? Again, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. There is nothing worse than a scuzz bag who decides to drink and drive, gets into a fatal crash, and decides and solicits help to hide evidence. This story from Fox News 13 in Tampa, Florida. Tampa Bay, down there in Tampa, Florida. It is so, so disturbing how people can think like this. Again, this story comes from Fox 13 News, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. The intersection of South Kings Avenue and Oakville Drive in Hillsborough County became a crime scene in the early morning hours of November 27, 2021. Prosecutors say a silver Chevy Silverado ran a red light 
and slammed into a white Volkswagen Passat, killing the driver, Christopher Murdoch. Enter an open plea to your honor. They say the man responsible for the deadly crash is Alexander Globius. They say he was driving drunk and tried to get rid of some of the evidence before police arrived. He even asked someone to help him. The defendant asked him to get rid of bottles when Edgar Ortiz Sosa refused to do so. The defendant removed a pack of Kona and a spray bottle that had been modified into a bomb and threw them over a wall. Nearly a year later, he is taking a state deal. And how do you want to plead to these charges? Guilty, sir. The victim's mother spoke virtually. Her anguish and disdain for Globius, hard to miss. But just know, I will never forgive you. And I hope that you see my son every night in your dreams. Globius spoke too. I'm not going to ask you to forgive me. I know that it's something that you'll have to deal with yourself. But I promise you I think about your son and you guys every day. And now he'll have 15 years in prison to think about it even more. Gloria Gomez, Fox 13 News. As part of his plea agreement, Globius will serve 10 years probation. That's when he gets out of prison and his driver's license is revoked permanently. Ah, uh, yes. Revoked permanently his driver's license. Yeah. You think that's going to really happen? You could just use a different name, go to a different state. Nobody's going to really know that. Again, we need to add that to my checklist as well and there has to be a master dmb list where if you get it it goes to all all the stations all the dmb in every state all right you're listening to distracted drivers busted.com the podcast show i'm your host howard dresher the creator of distracted drivers busted.com i want to thank fox 13 for that news this guy is he telling the truth is he really thinking that we don't know what's going on he apologizes and says oh i'm sure you you i'm not asking you to forgive me because that's something you got to deal with yeah it's something that you got to deal with because you screwed the pooch and you went drinking and driving and you ended up killing a family member her son you got to live with that forever but she has to live with it forever too knowing that you were reckless you were foolish, and you probably already knew about all the drinking and driving. One should not do that, but yet it still continues to happen. It happens in each and every state, in each and every county, each and every city. It doesn't matter. It's still there. And until we get really tough on these guys and we make examples of them, lock them up, put their trial on every network, start racking them up and stop taking time where it takes a whole year to get this thing done. She suffered for a whole year waiting for a verdict. And it, at least he had guts enough to plead guilty. Finally, he pleaded guilty. I just don't know what to say from that. It's it's just it's just insane how people think when they do something wrong. But if there was a switch that you could do, flip it. Hey, if I do this, this are this would be the consequences. If I don't, everything's good. You know, birds will be singing, butterflies will be flying, it'll be sunshine with a little bit of clouds, and it'll be a nice, bright, sunny day. That's what you're looking for. You're trying to get to that bright, sunshine day. Some people will never see it again because of perpetrators that we've discussed today. Don't be one of those perpetrators. And don't get triple A in Detroit. I'm telling you right now, I'm calling out AAA in Detroit. If you have them, drop them. Go to another insurance company. All right, you're listening to DestructiveDriversBuster.com, the podcast show. Until next week, please be safe. And don't let anyone take the sands of time within your own hourglass. Until next week, be safe.